So our next presenter, Cassie Burview, has a really cool background because she comes from a data analyst, citizen devs kind of background. And today, she has moved on to becoming a, a traditional, I would say a traditional coder. She does a lot of work with C Sharp and TypeScript. And today, she's going to kind of walk the lines between the dev she used to be and the dev she is today and show you an end-to-end -end fusion dev project where she is going to build a TypeScript Power Apps component, build a Power App, and then pull the component into it. And uh, I'm really excited to see that because that's exactly the kind of thing that all of us devs should be doing in our companies, making the right components, making the right connectors so that all of our business analyst teams can do their good work, understand the business, build the right front end things they need to do their job while we build like the org charts, the expense tracker slider thing, all of these kind of back end pieces that we're good at, that are highly reusable, remember reusable, and that way all of the business owners don't ever need to worry about it. Do you want to hear a cool story about how I met Cassie? Oh, yeah. Tell us. I went to a conference called That Conference mm -hmm. in Wisconsin Dells. I love okay. going to the Midwest for conferences because they are so cool. Like it feels like you're with family and stuff. I gave an AI talk, and sure, all the dudes lined up and were like, mm -hmm. hey, Seth, I have a really good idea about how to use machine learning for doing stock trading. Wow. I'm like, oh, tell me. And did no Cassie save said you from this no, terrible? That wasn't her. Okay. It wasn't her. And then other people that are like, aren't you worried that the robots are going to kill us? And if mm -hmm. you were here for the last segment, you'll realize that it's not robots. It's basically linear algebra and calculus. Mm -hmm. That's it. The robots, but, though, are here to kill you, just well, letting you know. Mm -hmm. Agree to yeah. this. There are some mm -hmm. robots that I'm okay with. Oh, uh, no. So anyway, she comes up, and she's like, I don't remember what it was, but it was something similar to this. So how do you adjust your learning rates when you're doing actual machine learning, and how do you know which models to use when you're you know, feature engineering? And it's like, oh, this is cool. Finally, real questions from a professional mm -hmm. data scientist. And I'm like, so, yeah, awesome. Here's this, this, and that. And I'm like, how long have you been doing data science? She's like, oh, I had to pick it up over a couple of weeks because of this project I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. you did in three weeks mm -hmm. what I went to grad school for four years for? Mm -hmm. She's like, yep. I'm like, all right, I'm going to write this down because we need to hire you. And we did. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. I did not know that. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty cool. And I was mm -hmm. like, because you know the people, sometimes after a talk, you know they come up to ask questions because mm -hmm. they want to, like I love people feeling important. So I'm, I'm going to make you feel important if you talk to me because everyone's important in my opinion. But there's other people that come up and you're like, whoa, whoa, this is like a legit, they have like actual questions. And then there's the dude bros that like, like statement ask a question to show they know a lot of stuff. She came up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she was like, man, I have this and this. I'm like, these are actually, holy cow, they're good, great questions. So what's your background? Where'd you go to school? Oh, no, I picked it up over a couple of weeks. And I'm like, amazing. Sorry. So that's my story of Cassie, who's fantastic. That is fantastic. Beth, and speaking Beth, how of am Cassie, I supposed to live up to that, look at that. that introduction? I know, you got to. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I remember still, was it two years ago? Uh, yeah, I think it was two years ago now. Yeah. Look at that. And so Cassie that has a guitar cool. in her background too. This is like the theme of the conference that I didn't know about, where everyone has guitars hanging in their room. I was going to bring really mine and do some song -ing. Um, Is that what it's called? Song -ing? Songing. Um, but I <laughs> yeah. feel like we want people to continue watching. Mm, yes. And also, exactly. Labrina pointed out, Taco Bot would never hurt anyone. And I am a thousand percent in agreement with you, Labrina. Any, any Taco Bot, I would be a fan of. Wow. All right, now we're going to let Cassie have her moment, and Seth and I will shut up for the next 30 minutes. Thanks, Cassie. Thanks. Hi, so welcome. Um, I don't need to introduce myself since I've gotten such a lovely introduction from some amazing people that I'm lucky to work with. Uh, so today, as we talked about, we're going to be uh, looking at creating code components with the Power Apps component framework. Um, so as I talked about, my background is in both .NET, so I started as a full stack .NET software engineer, starting getting to an AI, and now I play with TypeScript and Node and pretty much like anything I can get my hands on. So let me share my screen here. All right. 
So first, let's go over um, the agenda of what we're going to be covering today. Um, so first, we're going to talk about what are Power Apps. Um, just to make sure everybody's seen them, I'm sure they've talked about it a little bit already, but want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Then we're going to talk about the PCF um, CLI, which is the Power Apps Component Framework CLI. And then um, we are going to be building a code component from start to an end, and then we're going to add it to a Power App. So let's talk about some of the tech that we're going to be using today. Some of you may be really familiar with this tech here, and some of it may be new to you. So I talk about we're going to be using Power Apps Component Framework, and that has a CLI that we're going to be using. We're going to be using Node.js. Um, VS Code will be our IDE. We're going to be using TypeScript and Windows Terminal. And so if you haven't used TypeScript, um, and maybe you come from a C Sharp background, TypeScript is awesome because it gives you optional static typing to JavaScript. Um, and so it's really what made me start to love um, doing front end development was when I could start using TypeScript versus JavaScript. And so if you come from more of that C Sharp background, um, I think you'll like that. And then Windows Terminal, which is a command line front end. So what are Power Apps? So Power Apps um, is essentially their low code or no code ways that allow you to build business solutions, right? Um, so you've probably you've been hearing about these Fusion developers and citizen de developers versus traditional developers. And um, you know, we're all developers, we're all building a solution coming together to make our business work better, right? Um, and so I love that these uh, definitely empower people to build. Um, like they said, I came from a data analyst background and I started building stuff um, in Excel macros, actually was how I wrote my first code. And so I also kind of think of them as like gateway development or to traditional development. Um, and I used to work at a company and a lot of times we'd have different uh, requests from the different business lines. And, you know, they'd stack up and the businesses would be waiting for maybe a change in a label or adding a field or um, maybe a full application. And they'd have to wait till we had a development resource. So Power Apps are a really cool way to enable and empower um, PMs, BAs uh, to, to be able to solve their problems, right? Uh, but sometimes when you're using out-of-the-box solution, you have custom needs and you need to build something custom in order to get it to work for you. And that's where these code components come in. So you can build a custom code component and add that into your Power App to better suit and make sure you can customize the application that you're going to build. So let's take a quick look at Power Apps if you have not seen them before. So here's the home page where you go to build a, a Power App. Um, you have the different data connectors that you can use here. You can uh, select an app to create it. And then if we click create on the left hand side here, we can see some different templates that are available. So the cool thing about starting out is having a template and kind of reverse engineering things. You could start with one of those templates, start seeing how it's built. But I'm just going to go ahead and create a basic app here. So I'm just going to, or a blank app. We'll leave the template as a tablet. And then this is going to go in. It's going to create my development environment. And we can uh, see how we would start building out an application. So here's my blank environment. If I go to insert at the top, you can see the different ways that I can insert a component. Um, we're going to be using that custom. And then also on the left nav, we have ways to insert components as well. So let's talk a little bit more about the uh, code component framework. So Again, as we were saying, it allows you to create these reusable components customized to your needs. And the cool thing about them is it's going to be using things that you're familiar with. If you're already a web developer, you can use JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, if you're using React or Angular, you can use those as well. And you can also share what you uh, create. So we have this PCF gallery. Um, so like when you're using React and stuff like that, a lot of times you have different um, components that you can go get from the community and add them into your application. Well, we have a PCF gallery and you can do that with code components as well. So that I think is a really awesome feature. So if you do end up creating one, make sure you share it with the community as well. So the code component has three kind of like main elements. We have our manifest, and this is where we're going to decide or describe the uh, metadata for our component. Um, we have our implementation that's going to be in our index TS. That's where all of our logic is going to go. And then there's a life cycle in order to be able to interact with the Power Apps um, component or framework. And so we have some methods that need to be created. Um, they'll be created for us when we init our project through the CLI. And then there's different resources. So we have you know, our CSS. If we want to add our business, our custom CSS, so it goes in line with our style guide or with your style guide, um, the code, the images, all that good stuff. So here are the uh, methods that are created for you. 
um, pretty standard when you're thinking about building um, applications. And I like to point them out, even though, like I said, it gets created for you, but just so you're aware of that and then how that interacts with the component lifecycle. So here we have a nice diagram where you can see how the init starts and how that's interacting with the host and how that's going to be updating your view, which allows you to build this component and then put it, plug it right into your Power App. Okay, so let's build a code component. We're going to be building this slider component, which is a pretty simple component, but we really want to highlight the different ways or the, the process of creating the component. So if we go back to our um, Power Apps uh, option, and then we're going to open the, uh, C or the <laughs> Windows terminal, and I'm going to open up a terminal that I've already created with the uh, directory that I want to be in, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So this is the Windows terminal that I'm using here. I'm going to make the directory for the linear component, and then I'm going to go to that directory. So the next thing I want to do is the PAC help. So PC, PAC is how we uh, access the CLI or the CLI activation. Um, and then we're going to do dash help. So one thing that when people are starting to use CLIs, sometimes it can be scary if you're not someone that uses it a lot. If you're someone that is, you're like, yeah, I know. But if you're new to it, help um, will actually tell you what you can do next. And so we can see that we have the PCF Power Apps Component Framework, and we can see that we have solution. Those are two of the ones that we're going to want to be using. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that I think helps. You don't have to like memorize every command. And obviously when you use them a lot, you do start remembering them. Um, so I'm gonna do PAC, PCF, and then I'm gonna do help again. I'm just gonna do it with this one so you can kind of see how you can step through each step. Um, so again, you can see I wanna init. So I wanna initialize the directory for my uh, app. So I'll do PAC, PCF, init. And then I'm going to just paste in the namespace, uh, the name and the template, which is field. So when I hit enter that, that's going to initialize my project for me. And then I am going to do NPM install. So if you're not familiar with Node um, development, NPM is the package manager for Node. And when I do NPM install, it's going to look at my packages.json, and it's going to go and it's going to grab all of the packages that I need to run my project and install them for me. So it's really cool. NPM is, again, the, the CLI for um, Node. And if you haven't used it much, it's one of those things that uh, when you start using it, you kind of start to like it more and more, I think. Okay, so we got our packages um, installed. Now we're gonna do code dot, and this is gonna open up our VS Code instance and show us the project that we just created. Cool. So if we look over to the left, I'll click through these quick and show you the different files that were created. Um, we have our PC config, which is our out directory, the packages.json that I was telling you about. Um, our project and then if we go up to the folder we can see our main logic for our application um, so if i go to the manifest here um, this is where we are going to describe that metadata that we were talking about so um, we have our control which has our namespace our constructor we can scroll over a little bit we'll ignore my update that <laughs> needs to be done um, and then we have the display and then we have the property here and so um, if we scroll down, we can take a look at the resources. So you can see we have the code resource, which is um, going to the index.ts, where we're going to write out all of our logic, our CSS. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually just uh, paste in what I want it to look like for our project. And I will kind of re uh, make this a little bit easier to see so you can see what changed here. So we have our display key that changed. We have our um, control type and our name. And then you'll also notice underneath that that we have this type group. So we wanted to find the different types for our property. And in there, we have created a group, so we have multiple types available. You can have a single type, there's other types than just this. But then when we define our property metadata, you can see that we assign um, the type group to it. And we can assign if it's required. And so all that information that our, our um, component's gonna need. Then in resources, you see we have added this CSS, but that does not exist yet. So we need to go over here and add it. So I will click um, add folder, I'll create the CSS folder, and then I will create the CSS file here. Again, I'm just gonna copy and paste the CSS in here for this component, it's super basic um, CSS, and you could, you know, again, make it whatever you need. So let's go back to index.ts and take a look at our main um, logic here. 
um, we can see that, actually, let me um, wrap the text here so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. Um, so we can see uh, the functions. We have our init function here. Um, we're taking in the context for the component framework. We have the update view, the get outputs, and the destroy. So all those methods that we talked about, they're created for us, along with some lovely comments for helping. But I am just going to copy and paste in our logic again here uh, to keep things moving. Um, ignore those uh, red squigglies. I know as developers that stress this out, but when we do an NPM run um, build, those will go away. Um, so let's take a look at what we've created here. So we have our value. We have, we're um, adding our HTML elements, and I'm able to add the type since we're using type strips and colon, and I'm telling it's a, a div or an input or a label. And then um, if you keep going down here, you can see that we're going to then create that, add it to the document. Um, and then we're going to be adding the different attributes. So we have our input, which will be our slider, and then our label, which shows the number. You can see all the, the normal class ID attributes that we have, um, your normal HTML attributes, um, just adding them here in our init. And then you also have a terminal in VS Code. So if you haven't used VS Code before, we have this integrated terminal that we can use, and we can just do an npm run build. And that's going to create my output. So if you remember that out file, if you look on the right, um, we now have an out, and that's going to have my bundle JS with all my logic and everything that I need to run this. Cool. So you can see now um, the main logic. We added this refresh data. That's a, that's a new one when we paste it in. But um, you can see kind of how simple it can be to create a component and add your custom logic. So if we look over here in the out directory, uh, like I said, we have our bundle JS. And yeah, so not scary, right? So now we're going to do npm start, and we're going to start this uh, project. And we have a test environment that allows us to run it locally and test it out and see if it looks the way that we want. Um, we can make sure that the value is being passed to the framework as we want to see. It gives us a really cool way um, to just do that without having to you know, import it or anything and test it there. So there's our slider. We can see the value for the data output over there. We can see the height. We can see the different types that we added. Um, and it all looks pretty good to me. OK, so now that we have created our component, we're going to create a directory for a solution. For our solution. Um, we're going to go to that directory location. And then um, we are going to use the uh, PAC uh, component or, or CLI um, solution init. And I'm not going to go through the help each step here. You could do that if you needed to, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and type out what we want. So we want publisher name, and that can be whatever you want to have your publisher name be. I'll just do MS Learn. Um, and then we'll have our publisher prefix. And I need to add a dash there. Okay. And then um, I'll just do MSL, and then I'll hit enter. And now this is going to create my solution project that I'll need to um, edit. So we can see our directory. We can see everything was created. Awesome. Um, now we want to add a reference to the component that we just created. So we'll do add reference dash dash path, and then we will grab our path from here. Copy that and paste it over here. So now we want to run an MS build. Um, and so this is going to build our solution. Um, I've configured my uh, terminal in order to be able to use that command within it. You'd have to add it to your path uh, variables in order to do this. Um, but you could also use your, if you're using Visual Studio, you could use that terminal. I'm pretty sure that one's already pre-configured for you. Um, and so we can take a look now if we type explore dot, that will open up our current directory um, in our location. And if I go to the bin and debug, I can see that I have my solutions dot zip which is what we want. So I'm going to run another build here for the release configuration. So you can um, have different uh, configurations in that manifest. Um, if I go back to bin and click on release, you'll see nothing because it's still building. <laughs> so back. OK, cool. So now we can see that we have our zip created. So if we go back to Power Apps, um we got to do a couple things um so one thing actually let me click on solutions here quick 
and then let's click on settings and then I'm going to go to the Power Apps Admin Center. So here I want to enable using the Power Apps Component Framework um, for my application. So I can go to my environment or for my environment, I should have said, um, click settings and then in settings, we'll go to products, we'll click on features. And then in here, we can um, turn on the Power App Component Framework and hit save. So now we can um, import our component. So if I go to um, import, then I can um, import that zip that we just created. So I'm gonna choose the file and uh, search for that directory. So you can see how you can quickly go from, you know, a CLI, you're editing your project, you're updating your logic, you can test it directly in it, um, and then you are creating the zip solution, and then you're able to add that in to your um, solution. And now anybody that goes and creates a Power App can use this um, component that you created. So I think it's pretty neat, and I, I love um, that it also can be maybe the first time that you start playing with TypeScript, Maybe you've been playing with Power Apps and you've been thinking about doing some more um, traditional development in code. Like this would be a really cool way to kind of start learning how to do that and learn more about the uh, web development. Okay, so let me refresh here. And then I'm going to go to solutions and we can see our custom control that we just created. So if we go back to our Power App, um, We'll go to insert and we'll go to custom and then we want to import that component that we created. So we'll go to the code component. We'll select it and then we'll click import. So now when we go over to the left here, we can click add. We'll see the, the built in components, but we scroll down and now we see code components and we can drag and drop that onto the canvas. So let's move this over a little bit. And I think we need to maybe uh, zoom in, make that a little easier to see. Um, so there we can see the slider that we created. A cool thing um, with Power Apps too, if you wanna try it without hitting play, if you hold down Alt, you can actually try your control. So like normally when you go to test it, you hit the play button in the upper right-hand corner. Um, but if you just wanna test the control quick, you can hold down Alt. So let's update our value in the slider value and see that that updates on our slider. Cool, so everything looks like it's working the way that we want. Um, we can see the different properties over here as well. Okay, so um, one of the things that I think about these talks is that they're really like show you what's possible, get you excited, get you inspired um, to go learn and do more. Um, so I wanna show you uh, some of the different uh, resources that are available to you um, after this to continue your journey. So let me flip over to um, the first resource. So this is the GitHub repository. And here we have the full code for the linear component that we just built out if you wanna go check it out. And I also have some different resource links available to you here. Um, and you can see we have the PCF gallery, um, the Power Apps Home, all those kind of things. And then if we go over to Learn, so if you're not familiar with Learn, um, it's Microsoft's learning platform. They have these different modules. They're really, really cool you know, 35 to maybe an hour and a half um, time frame to go through one. And this one in particular uh, is a really good one to start out with. It's actually the one I started out with as well when I started building components. Um, so if you go here, it'll give you a nice overview. Um, if you click into the build the uh, Power Apps component, the other thing that's cool is it talks about all the different um, uh, prereqs that you need and it shows you how to kind of install those different things. So if you haven't done development yet and you're going to start, you can go in here and see how you would um, configure your environment. Another cool thing for beginners is that it'll also show you how to test and debug your code, a very important part because we all know it doesn't work the first time you run it. Um, but if you scroll down in here, it'll actually show you some basic uh, JavaScript uh, and TypeScript debugging tools that you'll have right within your um, browser. So. Um, definitely beginner friendly. And even if you're uh, more of a, oops, let me go back here. Traditional, um, if you're already a web developer and traditional developer, there's also some cool advanced um, ones in here as well. So you can go to the um, advanced features. And in here, it'll show you how to add um, and use React. So if you're, if you're a React shop, 
and you want to see how you can use React in your Power Apps components, um, there's an intro to that as well. So this is a really, really good place to start and continue your journey. So as they talked about, there's going to be an AMA after this. So come talk to me, come ask questions. I'm happy to answer any types of questions. You know, I get a lot of questions that like about how do I get started with TypeScript? How did I? How did you start doing different things? I'm happy to answer those as well as maybe some, um, maybe you're running, maybe you have done some Power App component framework um, stuff and you're having issues or questions, like happy to answer those as well. Here is the PCF gallery that I was talking about that shows some of the different components that have already been created. I love this one that has the reactions, so you can add different uh, reactions into your Power App. So there's some really cool things in here uh, that you can go and check, and there's a lot, lots of fun, cool stuff. Um, and then another place that's good to look at is there's all these sample components as well. Um, so if you have an idea of something that you want and you're not really sure how to do it, check out these different sample custom components um, in our docs. Okay, so thank you uh, so much for joining me today. I hope you're excited to start building with the Power Apps Component Framework. Um, and if you come from that traditional developer background, I hope you're excited to um, start learning and doing some of these things that empower um, the, the, uh, other type, the other types of developers to create that cool fusion development team. So thank you. <laughs>